then for uh, race number two, the Clothy with second heat of the 250s, the return of Graham Thomas back to the track. He's been out quite a while as Graham. Carl Benningfield, Aiden Arthur. The one is to watch in this particular heat of the 250s, race number three on the program. Uh, away we go then. A pretty equal break, looks like Carl Benningfield to me. That's hit the front of these going up that back straight. Graham Thomas has come for no, he didn't make the best of starts. He's on the shoulder of the race leader at that top corner on lap number one then. Benningfield on the inside, Thomas making a move around the outside. Shane Nodge has now gone through into third place. It's a match race at the front. Thomas has finally got there in the edge of Beddingfield. Beddingfield trying to come back up the inside. Half a bike between them going into that top corner once again. But this time Thomas pulls away on the outside of that top bend. It's Thomas who leads it, but Beddingfield is second. Again, he's completely missed the start of the open race. And looking back, second place at Benningfield is round the out to Benningfield to go through into second place. Can he get to Thomas with half a lap to go? Thomas leads in, but Arthur's in second, Benningfield is in third. The one way clear the remainder of the pack, Arthur winds it off round the outside of that pack. Hayden Arthur in second, Cole Benningfield is in third. Misread the flags there. There's still a lap to go, and Graham Thomas now really coming under pressure there from a North or Arthur again right round the outside. Thomas is pushing right. Arthur gets it. Arthur gets it. Thomas is in second. Benningfield in third. Nice is in third. Crew going on the middle of the trap. They're going to go with the five then for race 13. Away we go. Mark Cosser made a cracking start. Tom Marvel is the crew that have got William Cosser. He's in the morning. Dave Butler has tucked his way through into third. Coss already storming away at the front. He goes in the back straight for the first time. Then Marble in second. Buckley is in third place. Adams is in fourth. That's the top fours. They make their way down the back straight into the pitch corner. Already Mark Coss are building himself a clear lead. The reigning master champion. Totally in control of this race. Number 13. Marble holds that second. Buckley is in third. Adams is in fourth. That's the top four as they go to the back straight once again already. Cost of the length of a straight ahead of the second place crew as he exits up pits corner. Lee's completing yet another fault best lap. Cost of the clear leader then, but Marvel holding second place. He's got it in the loose, has a bit of a moment there. Buckley is in third. They have a good scrap for fourth and fifth. Adam just won't keep him back down by it. Surprises up by fifth to five at the moment. That's a bit of a surprise as Costa now leaves coming on to start his last lap, his ball the length of the straight clear, at the front, Costa the leader then, the Marble in second, Buckley's getting closer in third, Marble's gone really wide again, will he keep it going, he's locked it up, and Buckley's gone through the Marble, oh! Marble straight across in front of Dave Buckley there, so 64 comes across the line with 59, red flags are out, red flags are out. In race 14, delete number 375. So race 14, next one up. Revving up then for another heat of the big chairs, away we go, looks like I think it's Kieran Hicks has made the start in the, it is Kieran Hicks has dropped at the start then, then Paul has dropped, Penfield has gone through the second heats have gone through the third heats, they're going through in the second place, so they go to the back straight for the first time then, Hicks has stolen the march, the front trouble, he's done the chasing, in second place George Penfold is in third, Jeff Mesa is in fourth place, coming out of that pitch corner once again, he's trying to find a way through on the inside of Hicks, but Hicks has got the speed on the inside from Heath in second, and Ford is in third, Lisa is in fourth place, down that back straight they go, once again, again Heath is closing the gap on Hicks, could be interesting going 
going into this pitch corner once again. Hicks on the outside, Trevor Heath again trying to find a way through on the inside. Hicks has gone really wide, a chance for Heath if he can get the drive to get through on the inside. He comes alongside and Hicks again. Going into that top corner, Hicks has got back there on the inside. Hicks again back there on the outside to lead. take the lead. Hicks leads by Mike Heath again trying to come back through on the inside. Could be an interesting corner on the pitch corner this time. It's Heath on the inside. Hicks again making a move around the outside. They're locked together coming out of that pitch corner on the last lap they go. Hicks by Mike and Heath holding second place. It's moving at some end. And forward in third place, going down the back straight for the fuller top of Mike between first and second. Hicks again on the inside, he began trying to find a way through. On the inside, he's forced his way through on the inside. Can he keep the men's He's pushing Hicks wider and wider and wider. Coming out of that pitch corner, he gets on in line. Hicks is in second, and forward in third, Mason in fourth place. Super, super racing between Hicks and he for the complete four laps. And a super passing move on that last corner by Trevor Heath. They go into the top corner for the first time. Looks like Roberts to me lead them in that corner with Powell on the inside. Aiken making a move around right the outside. They come back and wait. Aiken in second. Powell is in third place. Coxon in fourth. The three of us for first place. Vision going up that back straight. Tell the acting being led for the first time this afternoon as Roberts leads in. And Powell goes through a brilliant ride by Tony Atkin goes through on the inside, catches them both napping. But Roberts again trying to get back round the eight to Atkin. Super eight for three. On the end to Roberts, Atkin leads in from Roberts in second. Roberts cuts back inside Atkin to retake the lead. Atkin again back round right the outside, half a bite between them going up that back straight. Once again, Super 350 action between these two for first place. As Atkin leads in from Roberts in second. That's the top two then moving on to four. Atkin leads in third, Cox in four, Fence within five. That's the top five as they go the back straight for the final time. Superb action in the seat of the 350 Solos race number 34. And Tony Atkins going to remain unbeaten in the heats of the 350s. Check a flag of race number 10. Tony Atkins gets in with his line. Robertson second, John Cox has gone for the third. Barry Powell, one time race leader, is four. Fence is in five. Parnell in sixth place. Adrian, there should only be five in this. You've got six on the line, mate. Well, we've got one move race for race number 41. And who's going to have the advantage to come by the first time? It's uh, Costa. He's in the front with Tom Costa holding second place. But the, the Costa goes slowly into Austin. He went to right up on that top corner. Costa leads in for Austin in second place. Austin now being chased on for that second place. This is they dive into that pit's corner once again. Then Marvel trying to get through. Get through into third place. As Tom Costa leads it, but Austin holding the second place. Marvel is in third, but he's in the bin, is in fourth place. He's getting away for the main of the pack, terrific. Drop the second and third, and Marvel's got inside Austin to go from the second. Austin again, trying to get back way on the outside again. As Tom Costa is well cleared the front, Marvel holds that second. Austin in third, Billy Winterburn in fourth place. I can play And Tom Costa leader. Marvel is in second. Austin in third, Billy Winterburn pulled. Red flag is out. Red flag is out. Got to ride it down over in right on side the, of the pitch. Tony Ackett, of course, going into this final on beaten. Strange things can happen in a final, as we saw with uh, that fourth heat of the. Uh, 500 sidecars when Hughes and Bennett have been unbeaten in the opening three and had machine problems on one in front in the last heat. So all sorts of possibilities can happen with sudden death finals. Jack Roberts has chased him on, so has Wayne Broaders and Barry Powell. Tim Kernock's been there or thereabouts as they settle in for the 350 solo final. Uh, 
Away we go then, who's going to get the drop? Jack Roberts has made a good start, looks like Charlie Atkin to me. The sun is inside, and as they go in that top corner for the first time, Roberts round the outside, Atkin trying to get through on the inside, John Cox has gone through into that third place. In six, that's a top six. Off the back straight they go. Drummer is winding it all around the outside. Ten Smith, he's now gone through from fifth to fourth. He's looking for that third place of John Cox. John Cox on the inside. Ten Smith winds it on right around the outside to try and get that second place. Is that the outside is on the shoulder of Jack Roberts now looking back second place. There's three riders chasing that third place. Listen, as that comes away the front, Roberts holds that second place. Fence with again, back where the outside of Cox and he takes it and looking for second. Back inside, back where the outside, three of us for second place. Going up the back straight, four and four time. Cox gets back inside, fence with again. Super action for a minor places. As Tony Atkins got a complete. Seven Pardo in eighth place. It's cracking, cracking. 350 solo final to follow a superb 250 solo final. Should be good heat with uh, Dylan Amos, Thomas Binning, Ollie Benz, and Cooper Rush in action in this first inning of the juniors. Into the pitch corner on that number one, Benz again taking the ball on Benny as they go in that pitch corner once again. Then it's rushing the lead again. Oh, it's not tangled up there. And Benz is being dragged along by Benny at the moment. Let's hope that is not as bad as it looks. They completely caught up there. And as they came by us, Ollie Binge was being dragged along by Thomas Vinning there. There was virtually no room over on this side of the track. And the next thing we could see that let's hope that uh, Ollie is going to be okay. Dylan Amos, of course, in third, number nine. Apologies for that, Dylan Amos. Dylan Amos was in third, so 63, 55, 9 and 34. We have to wait and see if we get to the top of 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 Bates is there in third place, going up the back straight once again, Rogers on the inside, Richard's making the move around the outside, he's gone too wide, Bates come through on the inside, and again it's uh, Richard's back around the outside, Bates super late for first, second and third place, coming through the complete round back, Richard's in second, Richard's in third, Costi is in third, but it landed over that top four, going up the back straight once again, they're four abreast, the leading Zach Bates has gone through on the inside, and Austin Richards has dropped it over on that far side, so Drama in this the first hit of the Inters. Tremendous drama in the first hit of the Inters. Beatty wins it. Costi second. Harrison third. Rogers four. Baker five. So drama in the first hit of the Inters. One of the favourites. Austin Rich is going down over on that far side of the track. Oh. Next race. Trevor Howes is the sponsor, it's the third leg of the uh, GT 140s, the intensity and sidecar man Rob Bradley shapes up in this one, was going extremely well when they were practicing, the interest to see how he goes. Away we go again, everybody gets away. 
And we're second and Rob Bradley pushing his way to the package in third place at the moment. Trying to get two on and wrap up in second place. Oh! One's gone down, one's gone over the top. Problems on that bottom corner. Problems on the bottom corner. The rider holding second went down. And the rider in about sixth place just had nowhere to go. Went straight over the top. So that's not good news. One Murray Collins when the riders involved over on that far side, he was holding the second place. I think it was a rider in fifth or sixth place, went straight over the top. So let's hope that both of them are going to be okay. Back in the line to get this race away the second time of asking. Away we go then, and one rider left on the line. It's four feet of easy to get the to get the corner first, Clark is in that second place position. This could be interesting between these two as they pair the way of the back straight. Smith didn't have a very good opening ride, needs to win this time then. And Smith leads him from Clark in second place. What's Clark going to do inside or outside? He's trying to find a way for him, so there's no way for the moment. Clark in second place. Number seven has gone through into third place. They race at the back straight. Clark's almost inside Smith. We're concentrating this leading two. They're together going in the pitch corner once again. Smith on the outside. Clark again trying to find a way through on the inside line. But Smith blocked his move that time and leads him to the Smith the leader then from Clark in second place. Third place, hold back in third, and still they're at it up the front, of right back between them, halfway up that back straight once again then, Smith Lee, Clark changes tactics this time, makes a move, round the outside of the pitch corner, Smith again covers his move, and Smith leads him on the last lap then, then Clark holding second place, which is Sergeant in third, the back is that back straight once again, Clark has got through on the outside, Smith again comes back round the outside, absolutely locked together in the first and second place, Clark has finally found the way through, and it's the Clark that's just been coming. Smith gets a second, super action between those two. Sergeant comes across the line in third, falls in third. Another heat then of uh, QT 140s. Not being Bob Bradley in this one. Chris Still has been there or thereabouts, so it's Mark Kessel. So it could be another intriguing heat of GT140 action. William Bradley and Broder still have all gone extremely well, so does Chesson. As they settle in for another heat of uh, GT140 action. All the little ragged starters are going to go ahead, and it's going to lose their travel to Carlton. Chesley in third, Bradley in third, Bradley makes a move around the outside to go through into third place and cuts back inside William to go through in the second place. Bradley's gone from third to second and still leads into the pitch corner for the first time. Bradley is in second place, William in third, Chesley is in third. Chester is in four of the back straight. They go. Bradley has a medal in the moment there. Almost lost that second place. And that's an out. Chris still to get away. The front of Gwillem's gone inside Bradley, who's been headed for the first time this afternoon then. It still leads it. Gwillem in second. Bradley gets back inside Gwillem. Gwillem again back around the outside. The second, third, and fourth place. Keep Chester coming in place as well. As Bradley now looking that second place of Gwillem. It's still leading to the pitch corner with the last half flag being made ready then. Still leading to the Gwillem in second. Bradley in third. Chester is in fourth place. So the Bradley looks like it. In third by can he get inside Willem going up the back straight he gets inside Willem to retake second Willem again back round the outside Bradley will come again back up the inside as Chris still gets in with the line takes the line Willem in third Chessel four super acting again there Lord Austin five 87 and then Kevin Bunder super duty work for the action again Thank you. 
Can I have for the answers? How are we going on? Blanket over that three as they go at the back straight once again. Rogers on the inside, Beatty looking to speed round the outside. It's watched in third, nothing much between these three as they go into that pitch corner once again. Still Rogers with the advantage, Beatty trying to come round the outside. That's what they're going for on the inside, they're on to that corner this time there. Rogers the leader, then Beatty in second, Watson in third. Beatty again trying to turn tight to the gap. He's going to make a move round the outside, Rogers putting it to that pitch corner for the front time. He needs to close the gap because Watson. Trying to get through on the inside base and the race the line. wins it. I couldn't separate second and third. It was what to won it, but I could not separate second or third. We'll leave that for the lap scorers because I simply could not. They were three abreast and they flashed across the line. Second time of asking. Oh, away we go then. Who's going to show it? Clark made a good start. Bradley is going to get the corner first. With Clark on the Jay, Chester is going to get the corner first. With Chester is going to get the corner first. With Chester is going to get the corner corner once again. And Chester cuts inside Clark and moves to the second place. So Bradley still the third lead from Chessel in second Clark again trying to come back inside Chessel yellow flags are out at the moment again yellow flags are out rolling down in the middle of the track does the action continue? Yes it does and Bradley still in second Chessel is in third and the bridge moves and follow up on that corner but still Bradley leads and Clark trying to get the lead from Bradley the lead's going up that back straight once again Clark again and throws everything to Bradley, getting into that pitch corner, trying to get inside Bradley, but Bradley's got the speed round the outside. There we go, between them. Bradley leads it, and Clark in second, Chester is in third, Collins is in fourth place. Up the back straight, and Bradley slowly but surely is pulling away from Clark. They dive into the pitch corner for the final time. It's going to be the Mountain Sidecar champion who wins his second time. He's in the Second, Jesse in third, Hamilton third, Sergeant five, and then Robert Coaster man at the back of the field. So and Chris Tillers is big. Then Ian Clark, Kevin Willem, Mark Stokes, Ian Stanton, Mr. Sergeant, Mr. Pitts. Seen back as well to the same day this year for the semi final. Looks like Rob Bradley has got a little bit more needed to me than what he was in the semi final. Starting on the inside. Willem next to him. Then back. Then Clark. Then Stokes. Then Gatley. The side to the other side. Where they go, they start to come and break themselves. And it's good. It's good. The best of sides in the fifth place at the moment. Willem gets the court to go. Duck trying to get round the outside. They're five of us on the first place. A real look goes down on there. Maxim Beck has come clear down to the pitch corner for the first time. Then he's back to the lead. They've been still in second place. Willem is in fourth. It's Bradley in five. Going at the back straight. Bradley again trying to pick up a place. I haven't got it in fifth. Kevin Willem. But Willem still holds him back in fifth place. As Maxine back leads going into that pitch corner once again. It's still in the chase. Willem 
Stokes in slip side and Salmon stands in the lane. And Clark has got through up the inside and then through in the second play. Relegating Crest in the third come Clark and then Maxine back. There's Buckley's now going on the last half. It's back in the Up the back straight, fairly follow time, two points between first and second. There's Maxine back leads going in, that puts corner, fairly follow time. Clock trying to come through and lose it in the... New British champion Zach Beatty making his first appearance on track this afternoon. He's the new British champion. Hayden Watts was runner-up yesterday and Kenzie Cossey finished in third place. So we've got the top three from yesterday, plus Oliver Rogers, Austin Riches and Charlie Wood, who all went extremely well yesterday. So it uh, could be an interesting hit in the interest. First time the British champion been out. One on the outside, great away we'll go then. Richard making a good start, Crossing got away, Macy is in third place, there it is for winning five, that's a top five, up the back straight they go for the first time then, it's Richard who leads it, Richard in second place, chasing the leader down, Costi leads going into that corner, Richard's making a move around the outside line, Watts has gone through into third place, Richard, as Costi leads it. Super action in the first hit of the Inters then. As Richard leads them from Cossie in second, Watts is in third, Wood is in four, Beatty is in five, that's the top five. As they come to complete that lap then, it's still Richard the leader. Cossie in second, Watts gets close in third, Wood is four, Beatty in five, Derek is in second. Three of us to second place coming on that back straight, Wood between two riders, Watts goes through in the second place as Richards is the leader, Watts holds our second place, Woods trying to get through on the inside, Woods just goes through on the inside, racing dropped it from on that pet corner, as the leader going up the back straight, 40 for long time, that leader, oh and the second place one has gone down, Charlie Wood, and exactly the same place and he fell twice yesterday, it's all happening in his first heat of the Inters, as Richards picks up the winning ride. Now, cost is not coming round to complete, but the red flag was already out. So we got drama there, while well, the new British champion falls, while in fifth place on that pitch corner, and Charlie Wood, exactly where he fell off twice yesterday, falls again while battling for second place. So and all riders are at the tape, ready for race nine. And tapes go. And we've got Wayne Rodgers, first in the falling down. Oh, crikey. Race carried on. We've got John Cox leaving with Steve Garcia closely following. Jack Roberts is far behind, but he's catching up. Wayne Brothers is three mountain is catching the pack quickly. John Cox and Leeds going up the back straight then, for the fun of time, Steve Garson running second, Jack Roberts after going over the top, and Wayne Brawlers and move back through into third place, and the last half flag being made ready then, there's John Cox in the clear leader taking the wide outside line, Steve Garson has gone really wide, he's going to come down, Steve Garson comes down, so Jack Roberts goes through into second place, racing on the yellow flags, and Wayne Brawlers takes the last half flag, Steve Garson has got a still motor in there, going to get going again for fourth place, there's John Cox Comes out of that pitch corner and takes the second flight for the first hit of the 350s. Jack Roberts, after a very eventful ride when he went straight over the top of Wayne Broaders' bike, comes across the line in second. Wayne Broaders, who fell, remounted now, comes across the line in third. And Steve Garsod, who also fell, will come across the line in fourth. And 17. Junior Action is next to the and it's Thomas Finningham makes a good stone and leads 
going into that top line to get Archie Rolf hasn't made, oh, two have tangled up, two have tangled up at the back and got in the back of Archie Rolf, who was just about to move through in the second place, and he finds a rider ploughing into the back of him on that top corner, red flag out, red flag out. Up for a second, he's been one forward, and away we go then. And it's Crystal has made a cracking start. That's no surprise. Make the way in that top corner for over Ian Clark. He's trying to work his way to the pack. He has gone through the pack. He's picked up three places, then picked up another place and gone through into third place. It still leads him for scopes in second. Clark has come for nowhere to go through in the third. Stanton in five, Burke in six, Stewart in seven, that's the top seven as they go up the back straight once again and Clark is looking that second place of Scopes now as they go into the pits corner once again, still has, has the advantage at the front, Scopes trying to get inside still. All the in seven, that's the seven, and he's hit the ladies again. Good race going on for first and second place at the pitch corner once again. Last lap flag being ready, still has gone wide scope. On the inside, it's still still a lead then from scope to second. Clark is in third, the front length and over the back straight, they go for the final time. Still still with the lead, what was scopes trying that final corner? Clark's coming back into the axe as well, still has gone wide, a race for the line. Still in second, Clark in third. Rawdus four, Stanton five, Burton six, Stewart seven, Alder in eighth place. And he is coming onto the line in gate number one this time. Alex Bowman and Mark Hopkins are the reigning British champions. They come out of gate two. Then we've got Josh Penfold and Dan Woodbridge. Rob Heath and Kyle Fish. They're the 2019 British champions. Tony and Tom Penfold in gate five. They are... Well, Tony is two times British champion as well, and Joe and Jordan Holland. So it takes up with this left-hand sidecar class, and it's an even break from the middle. It's Rob Heath and Kyle Fish. <laughs> Alex Bowman's in that third place, and Will Penfold has missed the start, so he's got a lot of work to do here from the back. So Rob Heath and Kyle Fish looking good here. Tony Penfold pushing Will Penfold wide on this turn, but at the front, Rob Heath and Kyle Fish looking good here. They did look very quick in practice. <laughs> Third place for him. Tony Penfold's now mounting a challenge on Joe Holland as they go into that turn. He's going to go wide, but that's allowed Will Penfold to have a look at the inside of him. So, the first three here are clear but we've got action at the back as Will Penfold tries to make up for that poor start. Joe Pen Joe Holland has got Penfold the back of it. Involved in this battle at the back. So the last lap flag is made ready for Will Peace, but I think we need to keep our eyes on this battle for fourth the third, fourth, fifth and sixth because they are all very close together. Tony Penfold now loses out. He now goes into sixth as Will Penfold is elevated to fifth. Now Will's let them all back past him again and he's trying to switch back around the outside. Yeah. 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 Will Penfold's gone into the top corner very, very quickly as he tries to go round Joe, Joe Holland. Will Heath takes the win ahead of Josh Penfold. It's very close to fourth, fifth and sixth. Completely wide for Will Penfold. A great ride for him. I thought he was going out here for a moment. So brilliant racing, and an outfit's overturned as they've gone towards the pits. Not sure what's gone on there. Will Penfold and Bradley Reynolds quickly up on their feet. But I don't know if something's broken on the machine there, but Will Penfold not happy with things at all there. So here we go with race 13. It's very important race 13, sponsored by Jumping Monkeys Inflatables. 
which of these crews will be able to take this meeting by the scruff of the neck here as the tapes go up away they go Mitch Gordon has nosed the head but he's got problems and they've come together <laughs> Gordon and Josh Gordon have come together over there. Something went wrong coming off the start for Mitch Gordon and Paul Smith. They slowed dramatically and Josh and Liam have ran into the side of them. So, hopefully everyone will be okay. And now we go back to race 33. We go to race 33, the 350 Sonos. And we have got Tony Atkin in gate one. Yet to win a race, but looking incredibly quick. Perhaps he's saving something for those finals. Wayne Broadhurst, John Cox, Andrew Whittaker, Paul Hurry, no David Benson, who won his second ride, as too did Tom Perry, away they go then, Tom Perry, they are all together for that second place, five or six riders all together, Tom Perry leads, and it's uh, Luke Clifton around the outside, Tony Atkins comes up into that second, Paul Hurry's right back in fifth, so, currently on a maximum, Paul Hurry goes up the inside of Andrew Whittaker, Tony Atkins battling away, he gets himself in front now. He's got himself into that third ahead of Luke Clifton. And Andrew Whittaker's in fourth. Paul Hurry goes up the inside. He's going to go up the inside, Tom Perry, but Perry's got enough to hold him at bay. Now Paul Hurry goes past Tom Berry. So a brilliant couple of laps of racing here in the 350s. It's Tony Atkin who leads, though. Paul Hurry will be the to back into this top corner, two up, Tony Atkin and Paul Hurry, plenty of times we've seen Tony Atkin and Paul Hurry battling it out in the 500 class, Atkin's gone wide, right. he's gone very wide and Paul Hurry's got very close to him, Tony Atkin's heard him there, he's got Fantastic racing from Paul Hurry and Tony Atkin. Absolutely sensational stuff from the pair of them. Brilliant finish between the two. I'm going to wait for Emma and Claire to tell me who what did the winning there. I think that Liam looks like he stood on gate five, so. Right on the outside will be Mitch Godden and Paul Smith and Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. Paul White and Richard Webb are going on the inside, so we can assume from that that the favoured place to be is on the outside of the circuit, going down towards that first turn. Stuart Bennett in the middle. So the nerves must be jangling here. Whoever finishes this race in front will be the British champion for 2022. High stakes here at the Sandhurst Bridge Raceway. The last one to line here, Josh Goodwin and Liam Brown. So the start mark is ready to take the up. Away they go. It's an start. Mitch Gordon has got away well on the outside. Jordan Hughes has got away. First turn, Sean Hughes has gone in after him on the outside. Round they come round this turn, Mitch Gordon's gone very, very wide. Sean Hughes has tried to tuck up the inside. Dan Perrick has got himself into that third place ahead of Paul Whiteham in fourth. So, Mitch Gordon and Paul Smith currently lead as the flags have gone out. There's a problem. Sean Hughes seems to have been on the outside. flags are out and we will have to stop this race. So, what a shame that was. Sean Hughes and Lewis Bennett, really well placed there. Number 98, Michael and Tim Phillips. Number 96, Tommy Penfold. And William Naden. Five times British champion, Martin Cuff and Colin Clark. And Danny Hill and Kieran Ivey off the outside. What an open lineup this is. Pete, Rob, Heath and Kyle Fish have been great this afternoon. Can they do it in this final? They've had the final wrapped up before and things have gone wrong. Surely it's their turn this time. But there are five very capable outfits out there with them who will be doing everything they can to win this British Championship. So the last two come into line. On the inside, Danny Hill and Kieran Ivey. Tommy Penfold and William Naden. 
correcting themselves there in the middle of the circuit. Rob Heath has decided to go on that gate six as well, the same place that Mitch Gordon came from in the previous race. and Colin Clark. Dale and Jordan Fish out of gate four. Robbie Simmons and Kieran Ivey in gate five. And Matthew Mola and Andy Wilson off of gate six. So a good looking race to start off the sidecar competition, Jim. Well, it is, and indeed, I remember back to your meeting last weekend where Trevor Heath had a terrific final, so uh, don't write him off yet because this one is a tough one to predict. It certainly is, and there's a lot of newcomers here who have uh, just picked up sidecar racing in the last few years and are very, very quick already, and hungry for success as well, particularly some of those riders that have been already winning league meetings this season. But here we go with an intriguing looking race number four. They are on the start, they are ready to go. So, tapes up, and away they go, and it is an even break. Trevor Heath has made a good start, but it's Matthew Moly and Andy Wilson that have got their nose in the front. As they go into the turn, Matthew Moly and Andy Wilson lead. Trevor Heath's in that second. Dale Fish has gone very hard on Robbie Simmons. All three outfits at the back have come together. So, an interesting one-to-one -one pick at the back as all three of them have stopped. In fact, the red flags are out. Red flags are out, and that's probably the best decision there, I would suggest. So bikes have been restarted for the rerun of race number four. Great to know that all six outfits will be back on the line. It was a very even start, but uh, at the time it seemed like Matthew Moroder and Andy Wilson had got away from the rest of the pack. Will they be able to do that again? It's always a lot of pressure at this point to try and do that again. Uh, it certainly is, Gareth, and indeed I know that Matt... Uh was telling me earlier on at the presentation that they actually blew an engine up um, on Tuesday getting out for a practice run and they're very pleased that it, although it meant a lot of work for the rest of the week to try and rebuild the engine, pleased it happened then and not today. So uh, I'm sure he would have been very pleased with the start that he just had and most certainly will be trying to replicate it once again. Yeah, of course, lots of these riders, they, uh, they don't have factories or anything doing their repairs. They all do it themselves in the garages. There's no factory team behind them, so a busy week for Matthew Moroder, and he will be hoping that it will pay off today. So here we go, it tapes up, and once again, Matthew Moroder's made a great start off against six. They're all together up the inside of him. Michael Austin is the rider having a look up in second. Paul Whiteland is in that fourth, pushing Trevor Heath along as they go in this first turn. It's a great start for Matthew Moroder and Andy Wilson. He has got Michael Austin and Vinnie Barge all over the back of him as they come past us. Trevor Heath and Sam Heath dive into that turn up the inside. So once again there are two lines forming up on that top corner. Trevor Heath is off into the inside there as he goes. Once again up the inside of Michael Austin in that second and third. 
So now Michael Austin is running wide, but he's allowed Trevor Heath a lot of space up the inside of him as they go past us. Well, again, Gareth, I don't know what was happening at the back, but you can see at the back of the field, you've got Robbie Simmons, who's missed the start completely. He's begun to catch up with the field. We wonder how long this race is going to be for him to make his way through. But while all that's going on at the back, we know that we've got a comfortable lead. Andy looks over his shoulder, looks to see the cap he's got as a scrap is developing for that second place. And we can see a change made. But Matt from Mola won't mind at all. Well, they're battling for that second place. And it is two outfits together as they go into this bottom turn. And Matt will see the checker flag this time. That will please him and his pit crew as they come round towards the checker flag. Who's won this battle for second? Oh, that is indeed Trevor Heath and uh, Sam Heath that have got that second place. A terrific sidecar race. Quite what happened to Robbie Simmons on the line, I do not know. Whether he had it in the wrong gear or something. But he completely missed the start and then had to make up ground for the rest of the race. So, back to the Masters and the 500 Solo, sponsored by Dave Commercials. And what a lineup we've got here. Jake Mulford, who had a poor start last time. Chad Wurtstad, Martin Sturgeon, Henry Atkins who won his opening ride, Jack Roberts and Andrew Whitaker, away they go, and once again Martin Sturgeon's made a great start, Jake Mulford's made a much better start this time, and it's Henry Atkins who's there as well, all three of them are together in the turn, Henry Atkins is the rider that's emerged in front, Sturgeon's in a wide side, and well on the outside, build up the speed on the outside line, but Henry Atkins leads, this is a good start from Henry Atkins, Jake Mulford has opted for that inside line as they come off this turn. He's now going to put Martin Sturgeon under a tremendous amount of pressure. In fact, Jake Mulford's gone through in that second place. So Martin Sturgeon now is relegated to third. And the Atkins at the front. Looking good once again. Looking exceptional as he goes around that turn. He has certainly got his gating gloves on this afternoon and he looks very fast. Well, he has, Gareth, and indeed he looks very, very quick indeed. As you rightly say, he had a win first time out, looking to make it two out of two. But I uh, do wonder what's happening with Martin Sturgeon. He is making the best of the start and then being caught by the riders. And you can see he's slowly dropping down through the field. But no problem for Henry Atkins. And Jake Mulford sitting there in second. Jake has started to close that gap, actually. There's a big, big gap between second and third. But all eyes on those front two. And Jake tries to go to the outside line round the pit bend. And in towards the checkered flag. It's going to be close on this line. And I would say that he's done it. Well, we wait for official confirmation. But Jake Mulford, a terrific last turn. He looked very, very quick up that back straight. Decided to go the long way round. And I think he's just about done enough. Tapes up, away they go. Martin Cuff's made a brilliant start off of gate six. He's leading as they come past us by a considerable margin. Rob Heath and Kyle Fisher in that second. Josh Penfold's in third, and Michael Phillips is in that fourth at the moment. But that was a great start from Martin Cuff and Colin Clark. First time around, they did make a good start and had to work hard through the pack. But this time they're there, and Michael Phillips is looking quick in that third place. He's going to try and go around the outside of Rob Heath on the pit corner. But Martin Cuff and Colin Clark here looking home and dry. Michael Phillips is looking quick in that third place. He's now going very wide to try and go round the outside of the two outfits in front of him. They're squabbling over second, third and fourth. They're all together at the end of the turn. Michael Phillips has just got a wheel in front as they go back into the big corner. So great racing for second, third and fourth at the moment. Uh, I think you're right, Gareth. That is exactly where all the racing is because Martin Cuff 
has set a cracking pace and got away, but I wouldn't say that this second, third and fourth is decided yet. You can see just going in on a very tight line, Josh Penfold has got himself in that section. But watch Martin Phillips, Michael Phillips going around the outside. He looks very quick coming off that bottom turn, but these three outfits together we're just going to have to let Martin Cuff go because he goes into his last lap leading quite considerably. But Josh Penfold on the inside of uh, Michael Phillips. Those two now pulling away a little bit from number 18, Bertie. But still nothing decided between those two as they go up the back straight almost together. You can see a front wall just getting in front of them. Josh Penfold has got that uh, lead as it goes into the middle of the bend. And they come down towards the checker flag. Martin Cuff takes it. But the best of that second place is taken by Josh Penfold and Daniel Woodbridge. The two or three races before the end, you're already starting to not enjoy yourself because you're anxious about... You can't enjoy it. Fucking pushing it out like that. Uh, the tapes go up and we get underway. We've got one crew that's been left on the line, but as they go down that back straight, that looks to me like uh, Terry Saunders has got himself into the front as he goes in that first turn. This is where it closes up. This is where it gets tight. Who's made the best of it? Tom Cosser. Tom Cosser gets through on the inside. Robbie Simmons is still sitting there in that third place. But I mentioned that it would probably be a very strong battle in this one, but Tom Cross is really making it his as he goes into that bottom turn for the second time. So a good ride this from Tom Cosser and Wayne Rickards who were able to get up the inside of Terry Saunders but at the moment Robbie Simmons is putting Terry Saunders under tremendous pressure for his third place, for his second place and Trevor Heath isn't too far away either so it's very tight still for second, third and fourth and now Trevor Heath is attacking Robbie Simmons for that third so nobody's safe at the moment, there's one more lap to go and Robbie Simmons has got Trevor Heath up the inside of him as they go into this turn and Trevor Heath throws the machine in Goes straight past the front of him and Robbie Simmons comes back at him as they come off that turn. Brilliant racing and at the front Terry Saunders has caught up with Tom Cosser. So racing in two different places here as I try and split my eyes. Tom Cosser rides a great last turn. He takes the win. Rob Wilson, Terry Saunders second. Robbie Simmons third. Terry fourth and I even put Rob Wilson back on the outfit for a minute then. Brilliant racing from the four outfits at the front. So uh, they're waiting for the starter to move away. I think we have all our competitors there. Just remind you of the points position because it is points scored in this semi final to add on to their running total and get them into the final. But the tapes go up and we get underway. Who's made the best of it? It is, of course, Chris Harris has got to the front. Number 72 is Jake Mulford that's got into that second spot. Those two starting to break away a little bit, and we got four of them on that first bend in that third and fourth place. So the red flag is indeed coming out on that top bend because we've got machinery and riders, but looking across the far side there, I can see that both riders look to be up on their feet and look to be okay. That's of course the, uh, the outfit of uh, Michael Austin. Number 80 is Will Offen and number 18, Mick Stace. So you remember during the interval that um, Gareth went up there on the start line and witnessed where they were choosing their starting gates. I can't honestly say that during the afternoon I've noticed any particular difference with the starting positions. We've had winners from the outside gates, we've had winners from the inside gates, but 
I don't know, when you were up there, Gareth, did you notice anything different with the soil? Not particularly, they were all pretty straight and, uh, yeah, good, uh, good launches from all six of them, really, so, yeah, nothing really. And it is a very long way to go to that first turn as they get underway. It's made a terrible start. As we get into that first turn, is it as we would have expected? No, it isn't, because Terry Saunders has actually come off that bend and uh, got the lead. But just coming through on the inside of him, Mark Cosser is in third place at the moment, so all three of those outfits together. But you can see that it is outfit 991-191 is Trevor Heath. And all three of them together, but Mark Cosser is now starting to work his way through. And has he got himself to the front? You can see that Terry Saunders has taken the dry dirt on the inside. And well, Gareth, it's all happening in this first semi-final. What a fantastic cycle race this is. Mark Cross is going up the bank and again he goes right round the outside of Terry Saunders. But Terry's coming back in and as we go into that turn, a fantastic cycle race this. Mark Crosser slowing the machine on that inside. He's trying to hold it tight. Trevor Heath trying to hold it even tighter in that third place. One more lap to go. I think Mark Crosser now has got himself a little bit of space. But a fabulous couple of laps. Mark Crosser was able to go round one of the riders. Up the inside of the other riders. Switching lines mid-corner. And round he comes. He's certainly been made to work hard for this one in that semi-final. It's going to be another win for Mark Crosser. Trevor Heath's come through for that second. By Trevor Heath to come through for second ahead of Terry Saunders in third. Fabulous sidecar racing. Yep. Tremendous racing in this semi final, but once again, the all conquering Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams. So we look to that far side and we can see that the last of the outfits are now coming into line trick to watch for is to see that Marshall in the centre there with the orange bib on if he moves back behind the side cars then you know the tapes are going to go up well there he goes up go the tapes and we get underway who's made the best of those starts as they come down that back straight it is Mark Crosser that's got himself to the front as he goes in to that first turn and the rest sort themselves out as they come round that first turn Who's made the break? Well, Mark Crosser is being chased hard by Colin Blackburn at the moment. Terry Saunders is on the outside of those front three, but he's got caught up in the dust and he drops back as the riders go through on the inside of him. So he starts to open up with Mark Crosser standing his authority on this one once again. Comes round that bottom turn, looking absolutely fantastic. He's got the right line. Colin Blackburn is now coming under pressure from Trevor Heath on the inside of him and Trevor Heath is pushing hard for that second place while well, Colin responds going down that back straight but Trevor Heath is not letting him go as he goes into this bottom turn so Trevor Heath all over the back of Colin obviously Mark Cross has gone here but Trevor Heath is plugging away on that inside he's much more quick in the turns again he's gone to the outside this time for Colin Blackburn he's switched to the outside he's going to cut back to the inside as well this race for second is intriguing as Trevor Heath's got lots of speed on the back straight. But still Colin Blackburn holds on to that second place. He's got to keep it tight if he wants that second place. The British Masters champion is Mark Crosser, but very close on the line. Incredibly close on the line between second, third and fourth as well. But once again, the British Masters champions for 2022... Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams, a faultless performance by them this afternoon. Uh, what can you say about this crew? They are absolutely dominant in this sport. The all-conquering Mark Cosser and Gareth Williams, British Masters champions again. Then Norse and Crofts have got away virtually together, but they don't leave. Come on, in your steps to the second place at all. The first time, and it's 
second, Steve North is in third, so Hill leads it. Cup is in second, North is in third, and these three getting away as they go to the back straight once again, and North trying to get through in the back. Cup for the second time, it's Hill of Soul and the March to the front. Hill leads it, then second is first, coming in that first, it's shoulder and shoulder, then Cup gets back round the edge of North, North comes again. Back up the inside to retake that second place. Cuff again back round the outside. Moves back through in the second place. This hill leads in. Cuff in second. It's north in third. <laughs> Equal distance between these three with 1 1 3 holding that fourth place position. We look at that lead in three, they go to the back straight for the following time. Hills with the advantage there, still. Uh, uh, in fourth, Billy Penfold in fifth place. Super action there and a great rate of finish, race number five. And delete number 75 as well. There we go then with the second heat of the uh, 250s. I'll give Russell a little to make the starting to wait in third place. <laughs> who has his vanity now coming under pressure it's Austin Richard has gone round the outside there Richard leads for Little in second Little again gets back inside Richard to retake the lead Richard again will wind it on round the outside of that pitch corner gets back round the outside of Little to lead down the back straight once again Richard's lead down the into a long way clear of the mountain of the pack and they come to the this little on the inside, Richard again making the move round the outside, and he's made it count now as Richard again leads by two points for Little in second. Little again gets back to on the inside of that pitch corner. Richard again sweeps back round the outside to retake the lead. Super action between these two. Little comes again and close the gap on Richard. Oh, 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 oh. Little again gets back inside Richard. Richard will he wind it on round that top corner, trying to get back round the outside. Yes, he does. There's again the coming off that back. And it's Richie to lead then from Little in second place. Little again will dive through on the inside. He's going to lead the moment. Richie again winds it on right round the outside to retake the lead by two bikes, men as they go to the back straight for the final time then. Richard Lee, second to the again, will close one up on the race leader, coming down that banking for the final time, the point between them coming off the banking, it's going to be Richie with a speed round the outside, Richard wins it, Little comes across the line in second place. 181 is in third, that's uh, my good fellow, followed by 74 men in field, and 75. Yeah, yeah. late, so I hope get in for nothing. So six crews on the line then for what should be intriguing race number 15. A clean break, they've all got away. Tom Cosson made a good gate from the inside. And he's leader to come in by Paul Whiteham's alongside him. Cosser on the inside, Whiteham makes a move around the outside and leads at the bank in for the first time. Whiteham leads in for... Down the bank and on that pitch corner, and Tom Cosser, hold, Paul White of holding the inside line. Tom Cosser got to go right round the outside. White of leads it, and Cosser in second. Puma Roller is in third. Offord is in four. Buckley is in five. American six. That's a six. Of the big goal. <laughs> 
Rogers having to go on the into the white loop as they come they can play the lap number two then. White loop leads in there for Tom Cosser in second. Fumarola's got the third. Offman is in four. Berwick is in five as Dave Buckley pulls on the middle of the track for all his third place they come to the back on the fifth third time last that flag be made ready then for Paul White the leader from Tom Cosser holding second Fumarol is from the third Hoffman is in four it's Berwick in five same gap between and Cosser has got through. Brilliant ride by Tom Cosser. He just picked him up. He took a super line on the inside of that to pitch corner and just got through on the inside and snatched him by half a wheel as they flashed across the line. Super ride there by Tom Cosser in the 13th of the big chairs. Line then for the second heat of the 350 solo. Oh, there we go, they all pretty well get away together there. Dave Meese had made a good start, so is Ricky Sanford. <laughs> Sanford. They come to the bank and once again for the first time. Sanford already been tracked already right round the outside. Sanford leads in second. Meese is in third. Tripton is in fourth. Harris is in five. That's the top five. They go to the back straight once again then. It's still Sanford leads and Paul Holly can't close the gap at the moment. Dave Meese is in second. Paul down the bank in four, the second time he's right in mid track. Again, Paul Hurley right round the outside of that top corner, but still back in second at the moment. And Mears has almost got inside him. It's Sanford leads it, but Hurley in second. Mears is in third. These three getting away from the fourth place riders and make their way to the back straight once again. Now Hurley's really moving up. Coming down the bank in four, the third time. Another change of tactics by Paul Hurley. He's trying to get through on the outside line, but not going anywhere near the winds of previous two laps. Sanford leads Edmund Hurley in second. Mears has got the third. Clifton is in four. Just the four left now as they go in the back straight. The Hurley's alongside Sanford now. Going down the back straight. Four, the final time. Half and down the back straight. In the second in the second. He's on the 350 solo. Sanford on the inside. Hurley again coming right down the outside. Turns it tight at this time. A race for line. Sanford gets it. Hurley is in second. Mears is in third. Clifton in fourth and just the four finishers. So five crews on the line then for another heat of the left hand side cars. Gets out. Well, Holland again has made a super quick start there. The leader's going down the back straight once again. Then. Oh. 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 Just Ben Paul gone through with his second slips. He's now gone through into that third place position. That's short as they go to the back straight once again then. Holland leads then from Josh Penfold holds that second place position. And that back straight on that side. Holland who's got the advantage any race number 13. But he's got Penfold's gone through on the inside. He now relegates 96 Tommy Penfold has now gone through into third place. There's Josh Penfold leads then from um, Holland holding second place. Tommy Penfold is there. Tommy Penfold really dropping back. They all have got problems again. Like they had the previous place. Looking for that front. Now, right at the back at the moment, 
and 16 is the race leader on to lap number four. That's Josh Benford will lead you. But again, Holland trying to get back around the outside. Super active between these two. Benford on the inside. Holland making the move around the outside. Tommy Penfold is back in third place to go. Down the back straight once again. Josh Penfold. Holland again. Holland on the outside. Down the back and they go. For the follow time, Josh Penfold trying to hold the line. Holland again trying to come back to get through on the inside line to race the line. Josh Penfold leads it on. Holland's have got bright problems. Holland's have got bright problems. So Tommy Penfold goes to the second. Holland's get the third. Norths are in fourth place in a very eventful race number 30. Mike Cruz in action for race number 30, or oh, somebody lifting out of the start, they really get the front wheel up there as Paul Whitenham has got away. And uh, <laughs> start the boat his way to the back, as is Richard Jenner, they're really bunching up in behind Paul Whitenham then. As Whitenham leads, Jenny Smith has got the second, he was lifted, lifted out of the start, then Jenner has gone to the third, Josh Goodwin surprised him back in fourth place, as Whitenham leads down the back straight once again. Jenner has got the second, Smith is in third. Jenner again gets back to the front. He's the gap on the three crews ahead of him, but Paul White knows making hay at the moment. Nobody clears the front there. Jenner holds that second place position. Smith has gone really wide, a chance for Goodwin to get through on the inside, and he has gone through in the inside, he moved through into third place, and White in the lead, I think Jenner holding second place, and Jenner seems to be slowing right up there, Richard Jenner, he's slowing right up, Goodwin has gone through on the inside, and Smith is holding through, Jenner has so complete change on that to third lap there as Whitenham leads him on the last lap then and Goodwin holding second Smith has got the third Richard Jenner there with a sick bike over on that far side of the track as Paul Whitenham leads down the back straight for the final top he had a bit of a moment there in exactly the same place as Richard Jenner that's as they come to the bank in four, the final time, Whitenham taking the tight line, Goodwin taking an even tighter line, a race for line, who's going to get it? It's Goodwin who gets it, Whitenham is in second, Smith is in third, and Paul Whitenham slowed up in exactly the same place as Richard Jenner had the lap previous, and uh, Josh Goodwin took about 20 yards off him going down that back straight on right, race number 49. 1000 cc right hand side car final 37 24 29 191 15 and 92 so three unbeaten riders going into this final mark Cosser, tom Cosser, and terry saunters mark had the quickest time in the first set of each but the next Two blocks of each, where the quickest time was set by Terry Saunters, but you never know how much Mark has got in hand. So we've got the six crews coming out. I can see Mick Stacey waiting at the gate. He is the reserve for this one. It looks like we've got the top six already coming out, just waiting for um, Trevor Heath to settle there in that uh, one from the uh, inside gate. Six crews ready then for what should be a cracking thousand CT sidecar final. Up to the tapes, away they go, they all get away together. And who's going to have the advantage? They come by. It's Terry Saunders oh, leading for Mark Cosser in second place. It's Terry Saunders leading Mark Cosser in second place. They climb the bank in for the first time. Trevor Heath in third place. The motor to get him for that position but Cosser is really motory trying to find a way through on the inside of Saunders but Saunders leads it then Cosser holding second place position it's Fumarole in third Ethers in four Tom Penfold in five Paul Wyndham surprised him back in six to the go down the back straight once again in 
Will it come to the mark in once again? He's half the gap between himself and the race leader. Looking to get a line through on the inside, but Saunders holding it by. It's Saunders who leads it from Costa in second by Costa. Then cuts through on the inside. Brilliant line by Costa. Can Saunders get back around the outside? No, he can't. That was a brilliant line. Possibly get through on the inside. Once again, it's Costa Legion. Then Saunders holding second place. On to lap four they go. Costa Legion. Saunders is in second. Fumar in third. He is in fourth place. Up the bank and they go for the follow time. And Terry Saunders having one go. He's closing up. 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 He's Mark Cossack gets the winning ride. Saunders gets the second. Fumarola is in third. Tom Cossack's up to four. Paul Whiteland in five. And we've lost Heath on that last lap. But what a brilliant final that was. Terry Saunders just got the drop. And he looked at he covered every move that Mark Cossack could throw at him. But as they came down along the side to see him, Cossack went to go wide. Saunders went wide to cover it. Costa cut back for the inside run. A superb move. They climbed the bank in. He got inside Saunders and Saunders could not get back at him. So, brilliant effort there by Mark Costa to win that 1,000cc sidecar final. Cracking final as we all thought it would be. Coming for the line first of all is our car for the course of the afternoon. Number 86. And of course is Paul Harry, who's uh, current this champion in the 350s. Well, it started trying to get the ball in the right places, but Cameron Taylor, I think, is uh, saying well, there's not enough room for me. Well, the star deciding that uh, Cameron's got to go on the outside. And he eventually gets in line. So we start as move around. And as they get underway, Paul Hurry's made a very good start. Has he got the lead? He's going in that first corner. I don't think he has. As they go around that first bend, you can see four riders together. As they come out of that first turn, we'll pick them up for you as they come down. Well, that does look to me like Paul Hurry has got himself to the front, but he's just slotted back in the second place as he comes down off that top end. Luke Clifton is the rider that's got that early lead. So, has Paul now got himself to the front as they go around that pit bend? <laughs> And a very, very quick 15 problems for Luke Clifton on that top turn. The rest of the riders managed to avoid both bike and rider. So Romano Hummel will be one from the inside because Las Pernas is on the inside. Paul Cooper's next to him, then Zach Bright next, next to him. Then Charlie Powell, then Jake Mulford. So uh, four Brits in action out of six in this race at number nine. Can anybody get to Romano Hummel? It will might not be quick enough to withstand the challenge of the high flying Netherlands rider. Should be a real crackerjack and a very important race number nine. Charlie Powell just turning back from the tapes before coming back into line. Obviously a little bit of nerves as they come to the gate for what could be even as early as this. A very, very crucial heat in this 2022 European solo final. One more now settled. No trooper goes in alongside him. They all look to be ready for the cracker jack race number nine. Being held. Away they go, Hummel's got away, Boyden's got away with him, so is Charlie Powell, made a good start, but Hummel gets a corner first, that could be crucial, Boyden's sweeping around the outside, trying to get a challenging blow as they go up the back straight. <laughs> Boyden's got to put the up there in that second place, Richard, 
coming off that top corner for the complete lap number one then. It's Hummel that's still in the market at the front. It's Fight Engine who's chasing in second. Cooper is up to third. Power is in four. Mulford is in five. That's a top five. Going up the back straight once again. Oh, Lap number two then, it's Hummel and Legion for Bightnet holding second. Good race going on for third and four. As Charlie Fowler's gone to the third, relegating Paul Cooper to four. It's still Mulford in five. That's the top five. And they come off that top corner, and moving on to that pole this time then. Up on the clear leader, Bightnet holds that second place. And Cooper and Powell is shoulder to shoulder, stopping for second and third. Cooper almost got round the outside, he's trying to get through on the inside of that fifth corner. What a super, super race that was there for 34th place. It will lead the referee to decide that one, I think. Two passenger changes in this one. Mixed aces with Carl Pugh this afternoon and Joe Fish with Jordan Holland. consistent outings. Paul Cooper has got better as the meeting has, got, has gone on. Sadly, Chad Wurzfeld didn't score in his last outing. Kenneth Cruz and so much would be a little bit disappointed at the moment. Could he use the adapts very well to the English circuits, but not getting the points that we thought he would get this afternoon. So Paul Cooper goes into gate number one. Charlie Powell is alongside him in gate two. Chad Wurzfeld fills gate three. David Maring is in four. Bruce Hansen in five and David Pepper is on the outside of the six riders for race number 17 again, another intriguing race. A win here for Charlie Power would put him right back up into contention. And it's Bruce Hansen not happy with the position there of uh, David Pepper at the gate, saying he's too close to him there in grid number five and six. Charlie Powell turns back from the tape, so we'll come back into line. So three Brits and Atkin again in this one, but in the inside grids. Cooper, Powell, Woods Powell, Myrie, Cruz Hansen and Pfeffer on the outside for race number 17. Away we go, then Cooper gets away 
in Charlie Powell has got Chad Worth first completely missed the stop. The Brits have a one two but somebody going right round the outside. The ordering green has gone right round the outside and that's Kenneth through Sands and it's just on the and that's three of the second to the fair place. It's all up there on that top corner. So oh, I thought something would have to do. One of the riders has gone down upon that top corner. And it's uh, Cruz Hansen that leads in. Friend Myring, who's holding that second place position. That's the top two. The riding red. Paul Cooper's chasing really hard there in third. <laughs> David Pepper is on the inside, Charlie Powell on the outside, Paul Cooper in next to him, then Cruz Hansen, then Myring, then Mia and Pepper on the inside. This is for the B final, top two go through to the A final. to the saddle there in grid number four. All the rod is ready then for the B final, the top two to the A final. Away they go, who's going to get the start? Pepper's made a good start from the inside. And number five has got away, that is to Paul. Kenneth Cruz Hansen's got away, Paul Cooper's got away. While well, they go up the back straight, the first on the rod is
Billy Pale yellow there for Romano Hummel, white for Romano Hummel there, number 12. Coming in next to him is Chris Harris. Kenneth Cruz Hansen comes for the outside. Zach Voitnik is one from the inside. Yakamu Carl in white, that is a very, very pale yellow one there for Romano Hummel. And going to the inside is Paul Cooper. So Cooper on the inside, right in next to him. Then Bukar, then Hummel, then Harris, then Kenneth Cruz Hansen. That's the six riders for the 2022 European solo final. Romano Hummel waiting for all the other riders to settle. He's quite happy, warm his back tire there, sat back from the starting tapes. Chris Harris breaks ranks, goes back, will come back into line. That bike near clearing his bike, almost still doing the same as is Kenneth Cruz Hansen. Nobody wants to come in first for this big A final. Now Hummel comes in to settle. We're waiting for Paul Cooper, run on the inside, Hansen on the outside. They now seem ready for this big A final. Donald has moved away. Away we go with Hummel, has got away, Zap Bighton is going to get the corner first, Bighton gets the corner first, the rider in green has gone solid around the outside, Chris Harris is making a move around the outside, Hummel is back in third place, he's now up to second. <laughs> He's coming around inside now, Harris there. Harris just had no answer to the speed of Hummel. What a fantastic first lap. As Hummel leads it, and Harris holding second. Whitehead is in third. Cooper is in four. Bukhav is in five. We've already lost with Kenneth Cruz answer. We've already lost as they go to the back straight once again. Third out He got by Whitehead, then he picked off Harris upon that top corner. And he's storming away now. The former world long track champion is the clear leader. Ben Harris holding on the second end. Whitehead has got the third. Cooper is in four. Bukhav is in five. As they go up the back straight once again. <laughs> winning this final as well as he goes in the pit corner, 40 follow side. So Harris in second, Whitehead is in third, Cooper in four, Bukhab is in five. Back straight, 40 follow side. Ramal Hummel, he's the best to over there, Fantastic on beat display there by Ramal Hummel, he wins it. It's Chris Harris who gets the second. Zach Whitehead is in third. Paul Cooper in four, Jakob Bukhav in fifth place. So credit where credit is due. He was outgated for the first time this afternoon. He was third away. He got by Whitehead on that pit corner. He then went after Harris and with tremendous speed, he cleanly went through on the inside of Harris. No sign of him touching him at all. Controlled beautifully at superb speed there. So please show your appreciation as they come round on the lap of honour. Uh, thanks, Colin. I totally endorse everything you've just said. It's fantastic to see that the final was programmed to be in the UK. It's been held in the UK. I did smile this morning when they were talking about the problems of getting across the channel with all the rules and regulations, but they're all here, and I think you'll agree. There's been some fantastic racing. We've still got the sidecar final, of course, and I certainly wouldn't want to try and predict it. And when we were talking earlier about where they were going to go on that start gate, whether there's any difference about the longer distance on the green grass, Mark Costa is taking the outside gate, which is interesting. Or should I say that's the one he was left with. As they get underway and from the inside, you can see they made a good start, but Mark Costa has made a brilliant start from the outside. Uh, tremendous from that outside gate. When I was talking about the technicalities of whether they'd stay longer on the green grass or not, and Gareth Williams as they set the pace and it's now up to everybody else to try and catch them. Down past me for the second time they come and you can see that Terry Saunders is in second place at the moment. And the problem for Paul Whiteland that he's pulled off here. on Mark Crosser because he's leading a good scrap going on for that third place but at the moment it's Mark Crosser and Williams that have set the pace in the last lap they go Terry Saunders 
and Liam Brown still there in second. But look at this crap going off the third. Tom Crosser determined to get past third. in the third place now. And as we see Mark Crosser come across the finishing line, he's taken the big final, he's taken the big Trophy once again, Terry Saunders in second, Tom Cross has got that third place, and Neil Owen. Oh, we uh, can see that attention has been given to Jason. First half done then, and it's a first leg, a first leg victory for Wayne Broadhurst. As we'll wait and see what the second leg can do. So, second lot of GT 140s on the line. Revs are up. The line is up and they're underway. And it's an excellent start straight away. I, can't I think that might be the number 41. Of, it's the number 81, in fact, of uh, Lester Denham. But he loses the lead now to the number 777 of Steve Newsham. So, 777, Steve Newsham leads the way. Then it's the number 65 of Mark Henley. Uh, the number 81 getting swallowed up now. He had an excellent start, but now down to fourth uh, already. So, Lester Denham losing places. And now it's a pass for P2 as well. So... Your leader still unchanged, Steve Newsham on 777. Now your second place man is the number 66 uh, of Kevin Willem. So 66 Kevin Willem in second. Then it's the 65 of Mark Hedling in third. Then it's number 91. He's come from nowhere. The number 91 of Lee Harding now uh, in fourth place. So Lee Harding up to fourth behind him. Uh, in fifth, I think that's the 291 of Josh Brown. Steve Newsham has been caught now, hand of a fist by Kevin Quillam as there is one lap to go, there could be a battle for the lead on here, and Quillam is looking to the inside, there is in space, well defended by uh, Steve Newsham, so the 777 still leads the way with one corner to go, can Kevin Quillam manufacture a pass, he just looks like he's going to be a little bit too far back, but no he does come down the inside, and the number 66 of Kevin Quillam wins across the line, so 66 from 777, the number 65 and it's third, it's fourth for 91, fifth for 74. And the number 81 of Alessio Denham across the line. Behind him, the number 140 of Rod Stewart and the 171 of Joel Smith. Then it's the 291 of Josh Brown. OK, so race eight underway. As the line goes up and it's an excellent start, I can't tell from here, I think it might be the number three of Graham Brown, it is, look at that, wow, the way he lies it down into the first turn, the number three of Graham Brown is in fact your leader, and second place man is going to be Paul Bloomfield on 11, although he's not wide, and now to the inside comes the number 21 of Scott Ryan, so Scott Ryan now up into second place. So your order at the moment, number three, Graham Brown leads from uh, Scott Ryan on 21, then Paul Bloomfield on 11, who looks like he's going to have a trouble holding up the three in behind. Behind him he's got, I think that's the number five, of David Hollingby on the inside, then round the outside comes the number 16 of George Benner, it's carnage. The third place, oh wow, as there were two lines that looked set for collision. As there is a battle for the lead now as well, as Graham Brown will have to defend us all the way around the outside, comes the number 21 of Scott Ryan. Oh, he's all out of shape for Graham Brown. On the more conservative line, keeps that position, here comes Scott Ryan again to the top of the field. There's nearly contact, there is contact. The number 21 then all in flow, this yellow on the inside. Oh, the number three in blue, and it looks as if he's going to get him with one corner to go. Can Graham Brown repass? For the win, it's going to be close, but no, it's 21. Scott Ryan who wins it. Graham Brown is third. Oh, a big moment for a number 16. Number 11 is going to be third. Paul Bloomfield from George Fenner on 16. It's close across the line for number 5, David Hollingsby and Richard Wingfield. GT140 solos up next then. So, first lot of GT140 solos on the line. And this is going to be carnage. Second lot are in the pit box. So, as such, any riders for upright solos, event eight, second leg. Any riders for upright solos, event eight, second leg. Please make your way to the pit box. Is up there, 
they're underway. The first lot of GT140 solos for their second leg. And immediately it is the 777 of Steve Newsham. He won the first one. Oh, he was second in the, in the first one, actually. I forget the number 66 of Kevin Gwillem took it from him at the end. And they are one and two again. So, 777 leads 66. The same two, but in reverse order from the first one. Can Gwillem take the lead once again from the fast-starting Newsham? Still 777 then from 66. Well, that on the inside. Can he get the power down? No. The order still unchanged. It's third place. Number 65. Followed by the number 81. Then it's the 74 of Wayne Hill in fifth. Ever closer. Kevin Gwillem looks to make a move on Steve. Oh, and there's contact. And he's nearly down. Somehow he holds it. And Steve Newsham resists. Of Kevin Quillen who tries to take the lead from him, but he's not done just yet. Kevin Quillen on 66 and the orange lid. He's the man in second. Can he make that move again? Surely he went. Oh, nearly goes down, and I think he's going to have to settle for second. Steve Newsham on 777 will win it then. Kevin Quillen just couldn't find it this time around on 66. He's third. It's the number 65 of, of Mark Hedling is third. Just about taking fourth is the number two of Daniel Cockrove from 74. Wayne Hill, who is fifth. Alan and Ray are on their wasp. So make sure you hang around for that. Underway then for the first set of GT 140s. See who gets the whole shot. Down is the first turn. Oh, it's bumpy, bumpy, and it is still the number 54 then of Ian Clark. So 54 Ian Clark, but no, down the inside comes the 777 um, of Steve Nugent. But round back around the outside. Great repass from Ian Clark then. Didn't see that one coming. The number 54 then. Leads the way from 777, then it's 21 in third, and 66 are uh, in fourth. He'll be looking for revenge, of course, the second time out for this class. We had contact a lap before the end between 777 and 66. So watch those two, 777 all in black, and 66 with the orange helmet currently sits fourth. I'm impressed by the number 54, Ian Clark. He's had a brilliant start, and he's coming away from the three behind. One circuit to go then, and it just shows how important a good start is. Ian Clark looks like he's going to win it on 54 then. It's the number 21 who's taking second place then. Mark Scopes up into second. Steve Ninsham on 777, but now he's wide! And a change for the lead on the final corner. Mark Scopes is going to win it on 21. Ian Clark drops the ball at the last moment on 54. 777, Steve Ninsham is third. Um, and the fourth place man... Uh, the number 66, Kevin Quillam. Okay, so confirmed race order for race 34. Third leg of the first set of GT140 solos. Confirmed order for race 34. 21, 54, 777, 66, 2, 11, 140, 81, 291. And a second set are on the line. The line is up. And they're underway. We'll watch for who gets the whole shot into the first corner. It looks like it's going to be nice and clear at the moment as it stands for the number 58 of up Wayne Broadhurst. He leads from the 811 of Lynn Carly Stanton, who's had a brilliant start. But now all the way around the outside. It's going to be close for second place because Glynn coming back now on 811 on the inside. Still 58, Wayne Broadhurst who leads. Link Carly Stanton on 811 is second, trying to push out wide the 55 of Mark Heading, who now looks to the inside. Can Mark Heading send it down the inside at the top of the field? No, there is contact between them, and they're both still on board. 58 from 811, from 65. Then it's 81, Lester Denham is fourth. Then it's fifth for the 74 of Wayne Hill. Then it's sixth for the 56 of Kevin Bundock. And now the 74 of Wayne Hill goes up the inside into fourth place. Oh, but is he still on the inside? It's going to be close, but he has made it stick. So Lester Denham now down to fifth. Can he make a pass for second? Look here, all in bright red. He doesn't quite have a chance. 
He cuts it wide, or cuts it close rather, and on the inside it's going to be so close, but the 811 of Glyn Carly Stanton takes second place. Just about holding off Mark Hedling for six, uh, on 65 for third. Fourth leg of the intermediate solos then, which means that any 500cc sidecars, any 500cc sidecars, uh, please make your way down to the line. And we're underway for the intermediates, their final leg. Watch out for the number six of Max Derek. I'm not sure if he's out there. He is fast starting normally, but he's down towards the rear of the field as it stands. It's the number 22 of Kevin Cossey who leads the way from 46 of Austin Richards. The third place man is 25, and that's Jesse James holding on to third place at the moment. All the way around the outside rides Hayden Watts. So Hayden Watts all in blue up into third. Your race order as it stands, 22, 46, 41, 25, 21, and 55. After 55 is Thomas Vining, who started so well in the third leg, and then toppled down the order. He's back up into fifth now. Starting to look close for P1. Kevin Costi is going to have to resist the pressure from Austin Riches, who's looking round the outside. Austin Riches, still on the outside, starts to lose grip, has to come back in, but now rides all the way round the outside. Can he do it now? Can he complete the move? The number 22 of Kevin Costi, later breaking. And he is going to win it. 22, Kevin Costi. Wins it from 46, Austin Riches, number 41 of Hayden Watts. And the number 25 of Jesse James is fourth. Thomas Vining is fifth. And your sixth place finisher is the number 21, Charlie Pryor. Twenty-seven, two one six, fifty-five. Here we go then, the main event. The B final for the GT 140s. Now remember, if you haven't heard already, the top two from this race qualify for the A final, the final final. So keep your eyes peeled for your first and second place finishes as we're underway immediately. It's a brilliant start, all in blue. I look, I can't quite work out who that is, so we have to wait and see as they come round. And it is indeed the number 11. So an excellent start in bright blue for the number 11 uh, of... Oh, uh, is that Connor Sargent? So Connor Sargent leads the way so far. As further back, I can see you trying to ride all the way around the outside. That's the number 8 of Thomas Wilding. But in doing so, he's lost the position to Brad Pizzi, who's now off into third place and challenges for one of those all-important top two positions. But there's a change for the lead as well. But now, can Connor Sargent come back around the outside? He looks down the inside, can't make it work. Has to be so, so careful in there. Doesn't want to drop out of that all-important P2. They're nearly three abreast as they come round. And indeed, Connor Sargent takes back the lead from Stewart, the man in second. At the moment, it's the number 11, Connor Sargent, 140 of Ron Stewart, one and two. They will qualify as it stands. Can they make a move? Oh, this contact for third and fourth. Oh, and just about putting a foot down to survive. But it is going to be those two. The number 11, he pumps his fist across the line. Connor Sargent on 11. And Ron Stewart on 140. They will qualify for their A final. For one final showdown. Our four protagonists were straight at the front last time out. And number 58, number 54, 66, and 777. And there is no doubt that it'll be between the four of them once we get underway again. Under starter's orders then. And they're underway. It's a brilliant start again from the number 54. And down the inside he goes, and it is indeed the 54 of Ian Clark gets the whole shot. Three abreast as we go into the top bend here, and the 54 of Ian Clark is now down to third. He's been passed by the 21 of Mark Scopes, but it's the 58 of Wayne Broadhurst who leads the way. Here comes Ian back down the inside into second. So you're on the contact again, but he keeps. 
keeps it up. The order, 58, 21, 54, 777, 66. Close in behind as well, the quiz. Uh, Daniel Cockgrove on two, who's trying to hold off the 91 of Lee Harding. Still the order unchanged at the front. Oh, goodness me, there is... Mark Scopes tries to get it stopped, and Ian Clark nearly runs into the back of him. A lap to go then. One lap left for Wayne Broadhurst to hold on on 58. He's close, you know. He might have a chance, Mark Scopes, but I think he's going to have more trouble from behind because here comes Ian Clark on 54, up into second place. Can he hold it across the line? He's not going to win it, but he might get second, and he does. Wayne Broadhurst on 58. Is your winner. It's second for Ian Clark on 54. Third place for Mark Scopes on 21. It was fourth uh, for Kevin Gwillem on 66. And all in all, a brilliant final uh, to today's GT140 action. They really are uh, the pick of the field when it comes to action. Fantastic racing. Um.